Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This is part three of the Getting to Blinky series. And this part is going to be all about creating the final schematic here so that we can move into associating parts and then creating a layout and sending it to CAD and all that other good stuff. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and open up where we left off last time. So this is the project. You can see that we actually have the GTB schematic and the KiCad PCB, which is the CAD file, formerly the .brd, but uh, that format's changed recently. So let's open up the schematic editor. We see the symbol we created last time. And we're going to go ahead and move this uh, to half screen. Let's do that. And then we're going to pull in the schematic uh, or the uh, the simple layout we were talking about last week or last time rather let's pull in that schematic move that over to the side this is from 555timercircuits.com so really simple a stable circuit for creating flashing LEDs and we're just going to mimic this uh, we could try and do something more fancy but we can always do that at a later date really you know the name of the course is getting to blinky so we're going to try and do that so there's a couple of things we need to do here. We need to get a power rails. We need to look at that kind of thing. We need to add a couple discrete components. And then we need to hook it all together. So if we're creating components here, we first need to hit A. No, oh, that didn't work. Let's try that again. And A. There we go. So we can drop components down. Oop. There we go. And list. And we're going to go into the since we're looking for passives, we're going to go into the device menu, which is the standard menu for all things uh, simple. So we have capacitors here. So we're going to put in a capacitor, and then we'll also put in, click again. That brings up the history of what we've already put in there. Since it doesn't have what we need in the list, we're going to go back in to the device library and search down to R, which is resistor. Okay, and then we're going to hit C, we'll co copy that, let's move all these down. Ah, and uh, like we talked about last time, at the end of the last time, we're going to actually move this, we're going to remove this, and we're going to put instead a variable resistor, which is going to be a lake dependent resistor, oops, that is in the device library, like we were doing, but it's going to look like a little bit slightly different. And this is just a generic symbol to uh, notate the fact that it's you know a varying resistance so let's move these up we want the if we can see me sc scrolling in and out I'm using the scroll scroll wheel on my my mouse oops and then we also need one more resistor so we'll copy this copy move and then click because so we can actually we can copy and move stuff without actually leaving the part placement tool so we can actually just click once again, and then go back into the component selection, device, and then we can actually even filter here, LED. There we go. Rotate to actually move it to how we want it to, to be. And now we can start wiring this stuff up. If we hit the W key for wire, that starts to draw. We want to try and hit it right on the uh, right on the nose of where the edge. You can see a little tiny dot there that signi signifies the beginning of a a uh, connection point. Connect that there. You see here it creates a junction point. We'll connect these together, and then we're going to connect. Uh, let's see, six and two get connected together, and they also get connected to that point there. Ooh, that looks weird. There we go. Another junction point there. On the bottom side, we connect it here. Five's left un, uh, unconnected. Connect those. Oops. Hit escape to escape out of uh, actually drawing one. Connect those together. Then finally, we'll connect these together. If we want to uh, leave a trace by itself, you double click. If you want to move a trace while it's already been placed, you hit G. Mouse over and hit G. You can grab the trace, move it down. 
you can see that that actually didn't connect there, so we're going to delete this and redraw it. Again, hotkeys are very critical in everything I'm doing here. All right, so that's great, um, but we are missing the zero volt or ground and uh, nine volts. In this case, it's going to just be a, it's going to actually be a uh, battery voltage. So we'll call it something different. We'll probably call it VCC. So if we want to place uh, power components, including ground, we hit the P, the key on our keyboard, list all. This goes into the power uh, library. So we're going to go to the VCC. There we go. It's a, it's a small symbol, which isn't great, but it's, it, is, it is workable. You can see it's, there we go. Create a wire from here to here, and from here to here. That matches up like that. On the low side, we want to connect up all these other ones to ground. So we once again click. It should still be in power mode. Oh, it's in wire mode, sorry. We could also click here for power power port. We'll instead hit P, list all, and then ground. There's a couple different grounds, but GND is the common, the most common one. Triangle, hit wire again, and did that connect? Ooh, that looked like that locked up. Hmm, that was odd. Okay, there we go. Now connected. All right, so we have a schematic that seems to match what we got here. The one thing we don't have is actually a power source that will actually uh, supply power to VCC, so we need to then place a battery. In this case, it's actually going to be a CR2032 battery, and in fact, it's actually going to be represented by, by it'll be represented by a battery symbol, but that will actually be represented in a physical form by a battery holder because really when we're doing a layout it, we're going to place the battery holder because the battery itself is replaceable if you look at the uh, uh, CR2032 it's a little coin cell battery if you've ever seen those before so once again we're going to hit A oops A, there we go, list all go back to the device library battery rotate this a couple times and then we'll copy these two things here. Now we could just wire them up directly, but I like to keep them separate just because. All right. So we've got our battery hooked up to VCC and ground. This battery actually goes down to about 2 volts before it, it uh, stops working. And we have our schematic here. Now if we want to match the actual values here, um, then we can start doing that kind of thing. So if we mouse over the resistor, we hit E, then we can see that we're into the component properties menu. Now the tough thing here is actually re realizing that, okay, so reference is currently our, our question mark. We actually want to leave that because we're going to leave that until the end of the schematic uh, once uh, it'll auto assign different reference numbers so it'll become R1, R2, R3. But the value is actually what we want to change. You click here to select the value, and down here is actually where we change the value. So this one is uh, similar to this resistor down here. So we want to make this 1K. Hit OK. You can see it shows up there as 1K. That's good. Over here, we want to again hit E. We want to hit or change it this to 1U, which is microfarad or U. Standard notation. We're going to call this one. Sometimes uh, in an, a contextual menu pops up because it doesn't know if you're trying to mouse over the actual component itself or just the value here. We could try and just select the value and we can just edit the field reference value instead uh, if we wanted to just change the reference designator, which is the R question mark here. We don't want to do that. We actually want to change the value internal. So you mouse over there and we change that to. 470k. All right, nice and easy. Now we're going to leave this one for now. Uh, this is actually going to end up being an LDR. Well, we could change that over. I guess we can just change that to LDR. <coughs> and finally, we have the uh, the 7555. The LED is going to be uh, decided later. And we have the battery here. We can change this over to value could be CR2032. All right, uh, we are good to go here. Now what we need to do is we actually need to 
an what's called annotating the schematic. And so this is, right now, all of these are question marks, VR question mark, R question mark, C question mark, uh, even U question mark. What we do is we actually annotate the schematic, and we'll actually make this full screen for that kind of thing because that hides the menu so far. Uh, but we're going to uh, annotate, and that actually auto numbers. In this case, it's pretty simple because there's only a couple components, but in the case of you know having hundreds of components across your schematic, it's a little bit more uh, troublesome, and, and you want to be able to make sure that you don't duplicate numbers. You don't want to have this one be R1 and then this one be R1 if you're manually numbering it. You want it, the system to number it so that it can uh, figure that kind of stuff out. So we're going to go to the annotate menu up here. We're going to use the entire schematic, keep existing notation, sort components by X position, which means that it'll it'll sort from left to right. Use first free number in the schematic, and then uh, we're going to actually just click annotate, hit OK, hit close, and then if we zoom in, we should be able to see this one became R1 over here. This one became R2 because it is going left to right. This one's U1, this one's D1, and so on and so forth. This is battery one. If we had a copy of the circuit, it would be go R1, R2, and then in the similar fashion, if this whole circuit was over to the left, you get R3, R4. All right, so we are just about ready to go. The schematic's done, a very simple schematic, but it's, uh, you know, still good. We're just trying, trying to get the blinky here. So what we're going to next do, we're going to actually save to the netlist. So let's do that. We're going to output to PCB new netlist. That's actually the internal KiCad netlist. We hit OK, netlist, save the netlist, and we're good to go. In the next video, we're actually going to assign parts that will allow us to say what types of footprints that are associated with these different parts. Thanks for watching. Actually, before we go, uh, <laughs> sorry, one more thing. If you are interested, I just wanted to mention the course that's uh, behind all of this. It's called Contextual Electronics. Uh, if you go over to contextualelectronics.com, you'll see this site. You can read all about the course here under the FAQ. The blog is a bunch of regular posts, and most specifically, uh, you can see the KiCad course, which is available here. These are all the different uh, modules that are available, including these Getty to Blinky videos, and you can also see the course for session one, which in this case is a, a video course teaching you how to uh, build an entire circuit, which is actually a much more complicated board than what we're doing here. So if you want to learn more about circuits, about um, practical electronics, this is a great way to learn about it, learn it alongside your peers. So I highly recommend you check it out. And if you're interested, you can sign up for upcoming courses on contextualelectronics.com. All right. Thanks for watching.